Typically when I think of Bigfoot, my mind goes to vast expanses of forest and mosquito-filled bogs, not people's bedrooms and homes. But over the years I've read cases of people encountering these creatures in their homes. In this video I will go over two cases that I found to be fascinating. Not only for the appearance of a strange bipedal hair-covered creature, but the high strangeness that seemed to accompany it. Join me as I delve into Bigfoot in the House. The witness, who I'm referring to as JJ, had just moved into a new home in late 2012 with her boyfriend and two pets, a dog and a cat. Built in 1982, the house was situated on a large wooded lot in a hilly sloping neighborhood. It was a very modern single level with a vaulted ceiling in the living room. For the first couple of years everything seemed normal, though that all changed in May 2014. JJ had been away in California for a couple of weeks and eventually arrived home about midday. She had a nice supper with her boyfriend and then they went to bed. At around 3 a.m. JJ woke up. She climbed out of bed and went to the kitchen to get a drink of water and some Tums, hoping it would quell her slight heartburn. As she went into the kitchen, she noted that she was wide awake and hyper alert. There was a window in the kitchen corner where she was retrieving the Tums from that looked out into the courtyard. For some reason, she kept peering out the window, expecting to see something. She was feeling creeped out, but did not quite know why. She told herself that it was just her imagination and that she was getting worked up for no reason and to knock it off. To take her mind off things, she began singing and talking to herself, behavior that in hindsight she found to be odd, as she wasn't the type of person to usually do that. The only light I had was from the ice dispenser in the refrigerator door. It was enough, but added to the overall freaky feeling I was wide awake at that point because of the little boost of adrenaline from the creepies. I didn't want to succumb to my silly fears and buried them. I walked back to the bedroom. Before I got to the door, something made me look down the hall into the living room, and the light was partially blocked by something. There should have been light from the street light coming from the front facing window to the left in the living room. I stood there trying to make it out. From the top of the ceiling in the hallway, which transitions into the living room, which has a 20-foot vaulted ceiling with two skylights, I saw an outline of a figure. There was light from behind it, but it was so big it blocked most of it. It was strange because the shoulder was just below the ceiling of the hallway. I stood there trying to figure out what I was looking at. From the point where I was standing to the end of the hallway was about 25 feet. It was just so oddly dark when it shouldn't have been. Then I realized the shoulder was moving slightly down and a head shape appeared. Two glowing red eyes looked at me, not like flashlights or glowing eyes of a Halloween decoration. A dull red, not very bright. I am pretty sure I audibly gasped when I saw the red eyes. Go go to bed. Those were my thoughts piercing through the fear and disbelief. I was on autopilot and went into the room and shut my door. Upon entering her room, JJ claims that she did something quite ridiculous, pushing a small clothes hamper in front of her door. I think about that now as the dumbest action, she recalled. From there she crawled into her bed and sat staring at the door, waiting in horror for the moment that it might enter. Thoughts kept going through my mind. There was no way that was real. But I'm wide awake, I thought to myself. I thought to go check again, but I couldn't move. I didn't hear any noises, nothing. I lay there an hour thinking and listening. There was nothing. JJ began to realize that her boyfriend's cat had not greeted her and begged for attention when she got up to get a drink which was pretty much routine for the feline anytime somebody was roused from bed for whatever reason. Where was the cat, she wondered. 
I thought over and over what I saw. A large-shouldered man-gorilla that dipped its head down with red eyes looking at me. He was slow and meticulous in movement and quiet. It was like it stood still to hide and looked at me because it noticed I was looking at it. But he seemed ghost-like. Not see-through. He was solid enough to block the light, like light and sound was blocked. It was surreal, and my mind couldn't grasp it. It had broad shoulders, so broad, it could have blocked the whole hallway. But it was half leaning over into the living room. No neck. Shoulder and head melded together. It kind of dipped a foot for me to see its red eyes glow. When it did that, my brain denied, denied, denied. I kept going over the facts. I don't know how, but I fell asleep. I made a conscious decision that it was Sasquatch, but denied its reality immediately. At the time of the incident, JJ admits that she had watched Finding Bigfoot, as she found it humorous and was open to the possibility that such a creature might be out there. The next morning, JJ awoke. It was after 10 a.m., which was quite late for her as she was normally an early riser. She began to remember what happened. Her boyfriend wasn't in bed, but she heard him walking around and the TV was on. In her mind, she had briefly thought that the man gorilla might still be in the house, but the sound of her boyfriend comforted her. Crawling out of bed, she wandered around the place and found that nobody was home. JJ then saged the house. When she was finished, she hopped on her computer and began to look up Bigfoot sightings in her area and discovered a report on the BFRO from 1982 in which a teenage boy walking home from work observed a juvenile Sasquatch playing in the snow in the Spring Creek Ditch. She found it a curious detail that her home was built in 1982 and to her it seemed to confirm that these creatures lurked around the area before her home was even constructed. She began to wonder if this creature she saw was some kind of ghost, a ghost of one of these creatures. How else to explain its seeming transparent quality? That afternoon, JJ and her boyfriend had barbecue and were relaxing and eating out in the backyard. As they sat down to eat, their young dog, a normally quiet basset hound, came out to join them and immediately started barking at the corner next to the back door. This house has lots of weird angles and this corner had one wall that looks into the kitchen and the other wall was the back door into the dining room. Nothing was there. I couldn't see anything. It was like my dog suddenly noticed something, was looking up, had hackles raised, and was growling and barking uncontrollably. I had recuperated and came to terms with what happened the night before, and then this happened. The boyfriend, who was just humoring me, now took me a little more seriously. The dog only barked like this one other time, and that was a few years later, but I saw nothing. I got the sage and cleansed the yard, and never had a problem again. JJ pretty much put the experience out of her mind until about mid-2015, when she found herself on YouTube watching Sasquatch videos. She landed on the channel of Ontario Sasquatch and listened to his theories that the creatures might possibly be transdimensional beings jumping through portals. She found the whole thing to be quite preposterous. But something he said struck a chord with her. Then he talked about the Sasquatch being in the house and things moving around. Boom. Connection. No, it couldn't be. I did a YouTube crawl and found more videos talking about how Sasquatch popped in and out of existence and were often accompanied by strange lights, which I never saw. Even two years later, I am positive there was a Sasquatch in my house. I went and got a stepladder and a measuring tape. This is two years later, mind you, so I thought its shoulders were at the top of the ceiling cut off to the hallway. There is a large awkward step down into the living room that is a solid 12 inches. Bad design. I measure from the floor in the living room up to the top of the hallway, then up higher to where the top of the head might have hit. 
10.5 feet. What the heck? So now I'm shifting into the woo-woo. I let myself think about this possibility. Is Sasquatch a trans-dimensional species? Can they cloak themselves? And I thought about the incident. I couldn't explain it away. I was wide awake. My eyes were adjusted to the low light. If it isn't nothing, then it has to be something. Also, I had the realization that it glamoured me. Like a vampire from a dime store novel. I was told to go to bed. My dog saw it and raised a ruckus. My boyfriend and I were standing right there. I couldn't see it, smell it, feel it, nothing. But the dog knew. The cat hid all day. I allowed myself to go down that rabbit hole. It's dark in there. I thought a lot about why me. Around 2016, JJ and her boyfriend separated. He ended up meeting another woman and marrying her while JJ left Oklahoma. She has had no other experiences. There are a large number of Bigfoot researchers who absolutely will not allow themselves to entertain the idea that the Bigfoot phenomenon might be connected to the supernatural, though JJ's case suggests that sometimes it's warranted. She described a semi-transparent, ghost-like creature with glowing red eyes in her home, one that appears to have entered and exited her home without causing a disturbance, and was able to, apparently, speak to her telepathically. As far as I know, flesh and blood creatures can't do this. It does seem that JJ had somehow crossed paths with some kind of entity, one that made a slight effort, despite its size, to conceal itself. Her description of it being semi-transparent is not unlike others who have described encountering a Sasquatch in the wild and watching it cloak itself right there in front of them. It seems that maybe this creature was attempting to cloak itself at the same moment she turned to look at it. How had it gotten into her home without causing a disturbance? Did it teleport? Was it in the act of teleporting when she laid eyes on it? But why into her home, of all places? The red eyes is also indicative of countless Sasquatch reports. She does not indicate that they were reflecting off anything, so they appear to be self-illuminating. Her animal's behavior, her cat who hid in fear, and her dog barking at something unseen to them is also indicative of some reports. The mind speak is another aspect of her encounter that points to the creature not being something natural. She indicated that her thoughts shifted to leaving, going to bed, as if the creature was directing her behavior. I do wonder what might have happened to JJ had she chosen to ignore these mental requests and actually approach this creature. Her behavior afterwards was odd, something she herself acknowledged. Why did she not wake her husband? Why did she not call the police to report an intruder? Maybe because she wasn't really in control in that period of time that the creature was in the house. What also is intriguing is her eventual climb down the rabbit hole, as she sought answers to her experience from wondering about an ape-like creature in her home to entertaining thoughts that it might be some hominid ghost or a trans-dimensional being, one that only animals and apparently some people are allowed a glimpse of. In 1981, Thomas S., then 16, also had an encounter with a similar creature in his home though this was accompanied by high strangeness which began earlier in the evening. Speaking to the UK-based radio show Velocity in 2013, he recalled that at the time he was living in Dublin, working as a dishwasher at a restaurant. He would often get off work at around 1 a.m. and would ride his bike a couple of miles home. There was very little crime where he lived, so the idea of biking home late at night didn't frighten him though on this particular evening, something else would. As he strolled down the street, he began to feel strange. I had left the building that I was in, and I suddenly felt as though I'd entered into an altered state of consciousness. I can't explain it. It was like I was in a dream, but I was awake. I was still going home from my job, but I felt like I was in a movie. I was walking down the street with my bicycle, and I looked at this woman. This woman was standing in a second floor window, 
and seemed to be staring at him fixedly. He likened it to looking at a ghost, it was so disconcerting. I thought that was freaky so I started cycling. I was going down the road and in front of me this enormous white owl flies in my path. But its wings were beating so slowly, there's no way those wings could have kept it airborne, you know what I mean? The wings were going too slowly, and that was the first time I ever seen an owl in my life. This thing was enormous and it was white, and it flew slowly in front of me into a park. When Thomas eventually arrived home, he noted that he was still feeling as though he was in an altered state of consciousness. He managed to fall asleep. He woke up the next morning at around 5 or 6 a.m., noting that the sun was rising. I look around behind me, and I had the sensation that there was somebody else in the room. In the corner of the room, there was what looked like a monkey. Now a monkey, or an ape, or a midget, or something, with hairy fingers. This thing, as soon as I made eye contact, it was standing in the corner looking around as if it was trying to figure out where it was, trying to make sense of its location. But as soon as I made eye contact with this thing, it was almost like it locked onto the target and knew where it was. It jumped across the room and landed on my back and started pounding on my back, sticking its fingers into my mouth. I could taste the sweat and I could feel the hair on its fingers. Well, I screamed and I got this thing and threw it off. Then I got up and I fainted. And when I woke up, everything was normal again. I didn't have the sense of being somewhere else. Thomas S. would go on to have a lengthy career in broadcasting in the UK. He still has no idea what to make of this encounter. When I first heard Thomas' story, I initially thought that he might have been slipped something in his drink at the restaurant, which caused him to hallucinate. But Thomas, in his recounting of his story, does not indicate that he believes that he may have been drugged. The sensation of feeling as though reality shifted around him is commonly known as the Oz effect, and it does sound like what might have happened if you accept that he was not under the influence of something. One might chalk his fright at seeing the woman and the large owl to his imagination getting the best of him. Noticing somebody staring at you at 1am can be disconcerting for sure. As well, it's possible that the owl he sighted was just a normal sized owl, but his admitted unfamiliarity with them might have caused him to become spooked, though that does not explain the slow beating wings though the Oz effect does account for this. It should also be noted the obvious link between white owls and extraterrestrials. His third experience, the sighting of the monkey or ape-like creature in his room, I found to be the most interesting. He described that the creature seemed almost confused, like it was trying to figure out where it was. It was only after sighting Thomas that it reacted, not unlike a wild animal might when cornered and feeling threatened. Thomas claims that he could taste its sweat as it sat on his back attacking him. When he fought back, tossing the creature off of him and rising to his feet, only then did he pass out. It was almost as if something else intervened at just the right moment. The aspect involving the creature being confused and wondering where it was again brings to mind the notion of being teleported. Like in the previous case, how did the creature get into and out of the woman's house without disturbing anything? Why her house and not some forest somewhere? Maybe the creature was just as confused as she was. Similarly, was Thomas's monkey somehow teleported into his room, which would explain why it seemed confused by where it was. While Thomas does not indicate that he saw a UFO at any point, it does sound like his experience lines up with many people who have had encounters with extraterrestrials. The sensation of feeling almost out of body, of time slowing down, the odd creatures he encountered. It all points to something very strange. And the possibility that these hairy ape-like creatures people encounter might not, in at least some cases, be of this world.